Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Dawn of Dragons. In these hard and trying times, I thought it would be in the best interest of you, our listeners, if I ceased with the three-week cycle of releasing the episodes and instead gave you something to listen to while you may be dealing with everything happening with the coronavirus. We've seen it hurt many people that are close to us in different ways. Um, some of us have been you know, affected by getting sick. Some of us have been affected by uh, travel and quarantine, even sometimes when it's work-related. Of course, for many of us, the day-to-day job is what is required in order to pay for our homes and our families. And quite frankly, it's scary. Um, but there's hope. Many years ago, we did a show where the closing statement was, there's hope. There's always hope. And that has rang true with me for many years since then, to the point where I named my daughter with the middle name of Hope. Our fantasy world that we give is an escape. Sometimes it's dark, uh, foreboding, and other times there may be humor. But there's always hope. There's always hope that good will conquer evil. There's always a reason, a reason to continue to press on. So as I finish these episodes, I'll be putting them up as soon as they're done. They won't follow any kind of schedule. Of course, that hampers any kind of preliminary hype or what have you, that kind of marketing. So I'll rely on all of us together to help spread the word about the show and give people a story they can listen to and escape from the constant bombardment of what's happening around us, even if it's for a moment. But remember, there's always hope. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy Dawn of Dragons. Dawn of Dragons, Season 2, Episode 3, The Deep. It's just down this way. Vix called back softly as they made their way down the musty stone corridor, looking back briefly to make sure they were all together. There was power in numbers, after all. He saw Sophie in her chain and plate armor now, the jovial court attire stowed back in her guest room. She seemed a bit apprehensive when Vix had fetched her to talk of the discovery in the deep. This only grew when one by one they fetched the others. All but three joined them late in the evening, around the witching hour. Zorn and Zane simply were too tired to have been woken from their rooms, snoring in and what seemed in concert with each other. Keldor, little known to them, had gone out to the courtyard alone, to think of another time under the stars, while slowly puffing on a long-stemmed pipe. I don't like traveling this far from the others. Cordelia said plainly to Benedict. I agree, but they may be safer where they are. Besides, we shall come back to retrieve them once we ensure Vix has found it. So doubting, Vix sneered. Of course I found it. I just really wanted to find some more of that turkey, honestly. Scottmere retorted. I hope you did, Vix. And I agree we will need to come back for the others as soon as we can. They'll be fine. Something tells me they will be fine. Benedict smiled at the others. They had come to trust in his intuition and faith more over the past few months. There was a peace that followed Benedict when he prophesied that could calm the spirit. At the end of the hall, the smell disappeared and the dry dust of time lingered in the air. Vix approached the door and drawing a wide diamond with his hand spoke. She fa tef schlack. The door shifted to the side, as it had done before. Vix looked back with a proud grin. Come, let us press on to confirm. Down the stairs they went for what seemed like an eternity. 
The 20 minute hourglass Cordelia carried still dropped its dark red sand and only showed three quarters empty. She nodded to them that they still had time and they continued into the dark depths of the endless cavern on those stone steps. The steps hugged a rough cavern wall and were wide enough for two, though everyone marched in a single file. Partly due to the sheer drop at the other side of each step plunging into darkness, the blue-green fire of the torches never revealing the end of those endless stairs. A wet and musty breeze was gently flowing around them as they descended. They could only imagine the size of this cavern, as the torches disappeared far behind them in the distance as well. Sophie had moved to the front of the group in case of any danger, and now led them down into the depths driven by curiosity as much as the mission itself. Look at that! She said to Benedict close behind. By the nice shield, Sophie, is... is... is that a town? Sprawling below them, the faint glow of many fires was beginning to illuminate the fog far below. It must be. It's not unheard of to have those people of the underground build settlements of immense size... Though, I never thought I'd see one. Scottmere ran his hands on the rough cut wall. This isn't the work of dwarves. Too rough, too hasty. He spat on the ground in slight disgust. The stone deserved better than this, he thought. Continuing on, they completed the stairs to find the ground transitioned into a polished cobblestone street. The buildings themselves flanked the sides of the street with many people walking along the side to various merchants or inside the small shops of the marketplace. The people themselves were varied from elves to dwarves, some with gray ashen-like skin and red eyes to the more familiar tones they themselves bore. Halflings worked some shops and occasionally humans dressed in dark robes would bring baskets of glowing fungus to various shopkeepers who smiled back taking a share of them with a nod. They soon came to a long building. A few barrels outside the long deck stood stacked for additional stores to the tavern inside. Hello there. The voice startled them slightly as one of the humans in the long dark robe approached them. He was followed by a female elf with long dark hair. His eyes were like pale sapphires as they gleamed from under the hood as he spoke. You were the heroes of Ellington, are you not? They hesitated before Sophie broke in. We are seeking a great... Seeking a great artifact. He smiled. Yes. Yes, I know. And we are here to help you. He nodded at the elf to his right. This is Jade. She will be a light in the darkness for you. She has come to know this world very well and can guide you all. Benedict bowed as the others nodded gently. Welcome, Jade. Thank you. She nodded and walked to the rear of the group by Cordelia. Cordelia and Jade smiled courteously in greeting. The man opened his hands and three flames sprung from his palms. Red, green, and blue. There are three paths presented to you. One, an old man needs help with the marauding bandits plaguing his home as providing a slow and small impact on the world around you. A merchant holds path to great riches, providing you can allow yourselves servitude to him. And the other can heal the heart of your world, though it may come at great risk and sacrifice. He smiled, allowing the glow of the lights illuminating his face gently. Sophie turned to her friends. Should we help the old man? He's someone who's oh, asking for help. What about the riches? I won't be anyone's servant. No matter the prize. They all paused, all knowing the obvious choice. Sophie looked back in his crystal clear eyes. The blue flame has the great risk, correct? He smiled. Are you sure, Sophie? I foresee a path you can understand, let alone tread. But you will have to walk yourself. Though you will all be together. He nodded at the group. You will feel absolutely alone. Sophie closed her eyes and took in a deep breath. She thought of herself alone in al Khan, waiting for her sister who never came back home. Then waiting for Zane for so many years. I am no stranger to being alone. I... She stood straight. I know it better than anything else. The man closed his eyes, nodded and smiled gently. He looked at the rest of the party. Are your minds made up too? Will you accompany Sophie on this journey? They smiled and nodded in agreement. Then step into the room behind me, adventurous. I wish you find what you seek and can heal your world. 
They looked at each other smiling before stepping into the door. Zane sat in a meadow of white flowers as a bright midday sun shone on his face and shoulders. The sweet grass he gently chewed in the center mm. of his mouth was welcome mixing with the perfume of the flowers and nearby lavender. He turned and saw Sophie in a white dress. A white bridal dress, he noted. She held a small bird in her hand, gently stroking the brown and red feathers of the robin. She <laughs> smiled at it before turning to Zane. He smiled back. She gently brought it up to her cheek for a gentle caress before setting it free to fly. It spread its wings and gently ascended into the warm light. She walked over to Zane, the dress billowing behind her, dancing in the gentle wind. She knelt down to him, leaning in to kiss his cheek gently. She sat next to him and she said, Zane. Zoran was gently shaking Zane to wake him up. Zane. Zane mumbled. Oh my god, that was a snickerdoodle one. Zane! Huh? Zane shot up. Oh, what? Huh? They're gone. Everyone went down in the cellar. Vix left a note saying they were going to explore and be back, but they aren't. Well, we gotta go. Is it just us missing? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, let's move. Zane and Zoran peeked around the corner of the kitchen where they could hear some of the preparation for the next day, though the sun itself was barely peeking up. The beige and white outfits of those in the kitchen were covered in flour as they kneaded out the dough, rolling it into loaves to bake. There's a sweet smell of cinnamon and cranberries floating from the room. Zane was washed in memory. Zoran smiled and nodded, almost reading his mind. They knew they had no time to steal one of the breakfast pastries. Plus, it appeared these were made for those working in the kitchen. That didn't seem like a very nice thing to do, stealing someone else's breakfast. They waited for the bakers to turn and load the large wood-fired oven and made their dash down the hallway. They smiled as they reached the long, musty corridor. Those rolls sure smell good. Yeah, almost like the ones back home from the Howling Mountain Inn. <laughs> we would have snagged them for sure ten years ago. I bet they taste great. Oh, not as good as Edwin's. <laughs> <laughs> the two old friends chuckled as they made their way down the long stone brick hallway. Why did we come here again? Cordelia was furious. They were sitting down on the side of a dimly lit pathway cut in the floor of a long cavern. The light of the luminescent mushrooms and the lichen cast a blue-green glow about the walls where they were. In front of them, the path ended 30 feet in the darkness of the cave opposite themselves. Behind them, Benedict leaned against the cavern wall that was once the doorway that they used to enter the room. I don't understand. It was a tavern. You saw it. Yeah, I saw it, but not as much as I saw you just trust old blue eyes back there. Cordelia shook her arms in frustration. He was a pretty cool fellow. I probably would have trusted him. Shut up! All of you quiet. Her voice rang out like a bell. This was the first time Jade had spoke to them since joining the party, and the sudden change in her throat was surprising even to herself. There's no time for that now, however. She could tell the change in the air slightly. A smell of oiled leather and cold iron. Something was coming from the darkness. Something not friendly. What is it? Bendix said as he cautiously stepped from the wall. Vic spread his fingers from bald fists in anticipation. Jade drew the bow from her back, and drawing an arrow to her cheek, she spoke a single command. Shrek! The arrow glowed like a torch without heat, radiating an amber light in the darkness. She fired into the dark hall, the arrow illuminating the cavern walls before disappearing with a... Ambush! Sophie yelled. Cordelia and Vix began weaving their hands as Benedict and Scottmere charged into the darkness with Sophie. The opening erupted as six pitch-black forms sprung out as if made of the darkness itself. One hissed as a web sprung around their feet, anchoring them through the rough floor. Cordelia let a bolt of fire fly before she lost balance, falling backwards into a sticky web. Vix flung his arms in an arc, a wave of superheated fire drifting at two of the assailants. They shrieked in pain, one of them dropping to a knee to clutch a smoldering cheek. The other caught Vix across the face with one gauntleted hand, dropping him into the web as well. His vision began to blur. As he saw Sophie, Scottmere, and Benedict all fall into the web, joining the rest of them, he could feel himself being rolled up into threads and found himself unable to move. His 
vision was darkening now, some tranquilizing effect of the webs he imagined. They rolled him face up, a hazy green-blue illuminating the ceiling. Stepping into view, he saw one of the onyx-colored assassins take off their hood, silver hair bounced across their shoulders, red eyes reflecting in the light. Mistress Val. A surface elf. <laughs> what a rare treat to meet you, my cousin. Another shape stepped into view, this one a huge monstrosity. Vix recoiled internally in horror, his eyes paralyzed and frozen open. Shall I take them back, mistress? Yes. We shall get them ready for the slave market, I think. There should be a nice price for this lot. She turned and walked away as the large muscular arms of the other shadow reached down to pick him up. His fears were now realized as the monstrosity revealed the lower half of a spider. The Stranger is played by Philip Usher of the Averin Dark Saga podcast. Dryda, performed by Benjamin Corley. Mistress Valia is played by Bridget Ferugia. Janik is played by Stephen Ferugia. Jade is voiced by Cara Danvers. This is Vix the Chaotic You Sniveling Fools. Voiced by Daniel Nichols of the Happy Go Lucky Podcast. Gottmere is played by Colton Jansen. Sophie, played by Sarah Jenkins. Cordelia Shieldhart is played by Jolene Freskis. Benedict Shieldhart, played by Brian Dowling. Zane Shieldhart, played by Storm S. Cohen. Zorin, played by Cody Miller. And I am Mike Atchley, your narrator. Please help support our magnificent cast by following their projects in the show notes and telling a friend. You can support the show, too, through our Patreon program. This episode of Dawn of Dragons is sponsored by our patrons and brave adventurers, creators of printable paper miniatures and free online generators, and more to enhance your tabletop role-playing game. For Monster March, their patrons will receive a set of eight paper minis, including an abolith, a lich, and more. But that's not all. They also receive an ebook called Children of Anshar by KJ Shadmond and access to a beta version of a tool to create your own random generators easily. Stay tuned as our adventure continues and remember the oath. Stranger, I have a question for you, if I may be so bold. Do you love fantasy? With its heroes of goodness and knights of daring do? Hearty dwarves and mystical elves? Incredible dragons who rule the skies and breathe fire? Maidens so fair they make the gods themselves weep at their beauty? You do? Well, never mind then, off you go. But if you like darkness, disparity, blood and gore, necromancy and demons, then I have a tale for you, my friend. For in the world of Aetheran, there is but a glimmer of light amongst the coming shadow. The eternal darkness is spreading its influence from the world beyond, seeking to wash over the land like a dark tide. All is doomed. But there is still hope. A candle burns within the gloom for those that seek to walk within the light. The Knights of the Argent Order, warriors and wielders of magic, trained solely in the arts of demonic eradication. These brave few will battle to the last in hopes of securing a future for all mankind. Be steadfast, be stoic, remain vigilant, for here death awaits all in the world of Aetheran.
Available on all podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, CastBox, and Spotify. Search Dark Saga Aetheran to subscribe now. Now, Charlie, you and I have a deal. I'll be back for Christmas, which isn't that long from now. And you are going to make new friends and help Aunt Nani. You can't just leave me! Truly, I won't be gone long, and Aunt Nani needs your help. You don't need to keep saying it! Charlie, I know this makes you sad, and I know you're sad because you love me. Promise me you'll be helpful. Okay. I love you. The Happy Go Lucky Podcast, producers of Charlie Saves Christmas, bring you our next heartwarming adventure. Cassie and the Spectral Shade opens April 6th. 2020.